Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, and you know the rest. Just sort of uh, want to say hello to everybody. Again, the Mets won again today, 2-1 uh, to one against the Kansas City Royals. We're going to have quite a bit to talk about. I'm not going to be on too long, but if you're coming in for the first time, please hit that subscribe button and like this video. If you're watching, waiting to... to don't be afraid to participate. And uh, leave comments in the chat. It's not on StreamYard, so I can't like highlight anybody who sends me a super chat. I'm just going to wait a minute or two to wait for uh, some more folks to come in here. But a very good start to the Mets seat. <coughs> Aside from the, the start, excuse me. <coughs> Aside from the 5-0-5 uh, oh start, they've played really well. I mean, you can't really complain. About this start, the Mets have. Um, so you know, we could be ticky tack about this or that, but really, uh, they've been they they look pretty good so far. Um, very happy with what I've seen so far. Their energy has been great. Uh, the energy of this club has been really good. You you could tell the manager uh, emphasizes certain things. He's letting them play, uh, and, and he, they look pretty good so far. So. Now, please hit the like button. I'm <clears throat> getting into this momentarily. Into this game in particular. So, I have to watch a lot of this game. Um, obviously, the big star of this game was Jose Buto, who um, this was a spot star for him because of all the rainouts and all the stuff that had been happening. Um, you know, with all the double headers and all the rainouts. And, of course, uh, they don't have a fifth starter because Tyler McGill's hurt. Um, so they sort of been bouncing people in and out of here, but the boot up pitched really well today. I mean, really, he was, he was dominant. I mean, he really dominated this game tonight against the, uh, the Royals. And it's a pretty good Royals lineup, uh, but the, the injury to Salvador Perez, and he had a collision with, uh, um, had a collision early in the game at the plate and... He just wasn't, and obviously they took him out, and they had Fermin in there, and Fermin came to really hurt them late in the game because everyone came in in the ninth inning and struck him out, or had him pop up, excuse me. But to, to go do Buto's start, now he had one prior start. He pitched six innings in his last start, his first start, and only gave up one run, struck out six. Uh, in this game today, he pitched even better. When six innings, struck out nine, gave up two hits, and walked one. As the overall year is 0.75. Out of 91 pitches he struck, he threw 54 strikes. So that's pretty good. 54 out of 37. That's not bad. Uh, he is a guy. I had somebody sent me a, a, a little blurb from an article that Buster only said that the Mets' future in terms of their elite prospects as pitchers is very bleak. But the problem is, is that you can get a you can get a star pitcher, or you can get a very effective starter uh, and not be a star in the minor leagues. We have plenty of examples over the years of guys uh, coming up to the big leagues and, and basically taking a major step. I mean, Jacob DeGrom was the best example. He was a guy that was considered a middle reliever. He wasn't going to be a, uh, maybe could have been a, a, a closer, maybe. But he was going to, he was looked upon as a middle reliever and he came to the major leagues and he was a star the moment he walked on the mat and walked down city the city field mound against the Yankees that day. And then you have a situation like that, Rafael Montero, who people say he was going to be a star, and he didn't turn out to be a star. He became a middle reliever, you know, with the Astros for all these years. You know, and so you never know. I don't know where Buto's future is, but he's pitched really well. Now, Carlos Mendoza had said uh, at, after the game, that he's not going anywhere. He's gonna be, he's gonna pitch again. He's gonna get another start. So hopefully we'll see more of him. I like to see more of him. He's got a very good changeup, and he was throwing the strikes. He was getting ahead in the count. He was very very effective against a very very difficult lineup. A very young and difficult lineup. Very aggressive lineup. So he was able to use that aggressiveness against them. So that so his pitching has been excellent. Obviously, Adovino came in the game. He went at the inning, struck out two. Uh, Brooks Rayleigh came in, uh, struck out two. Met ball has been good. Met pitching has been good, aside from a little 
blip here or there. Obviously, the pitching on sun Saturday wasn't very good. Um, Manaya had pitched terribly. Uh, Edwin Diaz came in the ninth inning. He kind of looked like he was. He wasn't throwing off fastballs when he came out. He was throwing one slider after another. That slider, boy, that I think we can all agree that slider was pretty, pretty nasty. You know, to that first bat. That first bat had no chance in the, in the ninth inning. And Bobby Witt, you know, he did the best he could to make contact with it, but you know, a little bit of a struggle. Um, but he was okay today. Uh, I was a little concerned because they looked like they were going to pitch him last night, and then they, they, they sat him back down in the bullpen. And I thought they should have gotten him in yesterday's game. Uh, but he pitched really well. He had a very nasty slider today. He threw 14 pitches, 9 strikes. It's a little less than what he normally does. You know, 9 to 5 ratio is a little bit low for him. But he he looked really good in the ninth inning. He really did. Uh, if you come through for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. Let's go to the Mets lineup. Now, the Royals have had a very good offensive start to their season. Uh, they're 10-6. and six. They were 10-5 coming into the game and, and in first place. Um, I've been very impressed with their lineup, particularly, obviously, Bobby Wood Jr. But this this past Catino at home run tonight, then he's a very impressive guy, too. Uh, but this is a very good lineup, and it's a very difficult lineup to sort of go through. Uh, and Buto obviously did a great job of of getting outs when he needed to get outs. You know, and just just the overall domination of this lineup, to be honest with you. But uh, Brandon Nimmo, let's start at the top here. <clears throat> Brandon Nimmo had a big walk in this game in the eighth inning. That's what down the game was tied in the in going into the eighth inning, no score. And the Mets were able to get a, squeak out a couple of runs in that inning. Uh, obviously, the pitching for the Royals was terrible in that eighth inning. Chris Stratton was terrible. He stunk. He was terrible. You know, walking four batters. When you walk four bat, you cannot walk relievers. I mean, you cannot walk batters if you're a reliever. It's impossible to win. And he didn't do a good job, obviously. But it was a good job for the Mets because the Mets uh, capitalized on it. Uh, but that that's a long Let me just take a look at his pitch count with uh with Strat. Strat did 28 pitches in that in that eighth inning. So the Mets worked very hard to get him to throw strikes and, and they did not give in. Uh, so they made him work big time. And obviously Brandon Nimmo had a big walk, the, the one run scored. Uh it's been a very interesting offensive game uh, by the Mets. They get a lot of hits, but they had good at bats. Uh, Marte went one for four. He's, he's been pretty good. Uh, Franciscan Lindor went two for four. And that seventh inning, he popped. I can't believe he popped up on the first pitch. And, you know, the one thing I've noticed about, oh, just over, you know, throughout the whole league and really both uh, leagues is that when you have men on base, hitters get very aggressive, especially on that first pitch. And sometimes in that situation, you got to be a little more patient. And Lindor was not patient in that, in that seventh inning. But the Mets won. He went two for four. That people were cheering him again, up to bat. I, I thought that the, the positivity. We need to be more positive. We need to be much more positive about the club going forward. Uh, this sort of negativity is not good, and I think now he's starting to feel the positivity that the fans in the ballpark are, are beginning to give him. And, it, and it's about time. We, we don't need to live on on that sort of ang being angry and mad and and all this, this all this drama. All this baggage on these these guys anymore. It wasn't really right to do that anyway. Yeah, guys, that's pretty good. Very high on, on base plus uh, slugging. Obviously, he scored the first run in that eighth inning. Uh, Tyrone Taylor had some kind of disappointed bats in the game, but he's been pretty good. Uh, Alvarez went on for four. Uh, Jeff McNeil went 0 for 2. He had a big walk in that, that eighth inning and scored with the runs. He scored the second run. Uh, Zach Short went 0 for 2. He had a good defensive play early in the game, uh, playing third. And Brett Beatty had a big hit late in the game, I guess, in the seventh inning. He's been really good, I got to say. Brett Beatty's been excellent. Uh, Mets made the right choice by uh, having him come up north and, uh, you know, when the, when the season began <clears throat> so far. You know, Vientos is hitting really well. And he's had an excellent start. Played great defense. 
And and Harrison Bader, his OPS is, is really lousy. 620 OPS of Harrison Bader. He's hitting 302. My good, he's not hit for any power, but he's getting on base. Uh, he, he, you know, got that little ground ball hit in the ninth in the eighth inning. Boy, for a guy that's OPS sucks, his batting average is very high. So he's getting he's getting his singles, he's getting his hits, and this is a guy that when he's with the Yankees a few years ago, went on this home run rampage. Maybe at some point, uh, the Mets will get will get a chance to see that. That would be nice. That would be certainly nice. Um, he's been pretty good. I mean, you know, uh, aside from a couple performances here and there, the Mets' start has been actually quite good. I'm very surprised at how well they've played, to be honest with you. Uh, just based on this schedule, how difficult the schedule was, and just based on the fact, for instance, the Royals swept the Mets last year after the All-Star break. Uh, not after the All-Star break. Well, after the All-Star break, but after the trading deadline. And the Mets were shot. You know, I mean, that's a group. That group was shot. And the, and the Royals beat up on them pretty good. And the Mets were able to shut this offense down, which is very was a very impressive offense, very good young offense. And for the Mets to be able to shut that offense down uh, these past uh, three days, or well, two to three days, uh, says a lot of good things about this Mets. And what they're trying to do is as just as an organization. But like I said, it's, it's only uh, 15 games so far. We have 25 more games, and then I will be able to sort of judge I'll be able to judge uh, how well the Mets are doing. So, you know, like I said, like I've said plenty of times, the barometer is 25 games, 40 games. Well, not 40, 25 games. I'm losing it today, I'll tell you. 40 games, Memorial Day, and 4th of July, and then we'll figure out where we are uh, before the trading deadline. But so far, aside from this bad start they had, they've played really well, and they've taken three series in a row, haven't beaten the Reds, haven't beaten the Braves, and now haven't beaten the uh, the Royals uh, two two games out of three over the last three series, which they won six out of nine. They won seven out of the last ten, which is a great sign. Uh, and their offense has been excellent. It's been clicking. The defense has been okay, but, you know, and the pitching has been excellent too. So we, we see some great signs here. Just got to do... Be more. We got to be more positive about the club, and I think that's helping. The positivity that we saw this weekend really helped this group out a lot. So I think that that's kind of important to sort of uh, as we go moving forward. Now I will be back again tomorrow uh, after the Met game. I just wanted to get a video in just to talk to you a little bit about the game, and I've had I've had fun doing this. Hope you have fun watching, even though you're very quiet tonight. Like I said, usually. Can't shut the chat up. Right now, the chat's very quiet. And, uh, but again, I'll be back again tomorrow after the Met game. Be back again on Tuesday, back again on Wednesday. I may, well, maybe not Tuesday because I got to work. But, or during the day because I'm just playing a day game. But, uh, and then, of course, we'll be back on Thursday, I think, at some point. Uh, Michael might be going out Thursday night. Maybe we'll see. And Friday will definitely be on. We'll be on Friday before the Met game because the Mets are playing in Los Angeles. We'll have a pregame show before the game. I don't know if there'll be a, a video on Saturday on Saturday night after that game is over. But um, just got to keep it where got to keep it where it is. Thank you for watching this live stream. Have a good day. Have a good night, and I'll see you later.